Hi friends, today we are going to talk about how, what are the different questions that you can encounter in a SAP vendor invoice management interview. Okay, so these are some of the sample questions you can expect and based on what you have written in the resume, the questions might change. But these are some of the samples that you can expect. Okay, so the first questions that people will ask generally will ask what type of work you have done in VIM. This defines the the path where the questions is going to flow so if you are saying something to to be honest to all my friends don't lie anything here just tell what you have done if you have done support work you say i have done support work if you have done configuration work you just mention that i only do configuration don't lie here because based on this there will be and also you can mention when you are when you are telling that i have done support work some of the works that i have done the are these Based on that, the next questions will come, okay? So be very truthful on your resume as well as when you're telling those things. Lots of times when I take an interview, I give them the chance based on what they're saying and then based on that, I ask the questions because it's no point asking questions that you haven't done, okay? It's just, uh, you know, embarrassing you and it's no point, it's embarrassing. It's, it's also bad because this person hasn't got the chance to work on it why even ask him the questions okay so <clears throat> this is another important this is very important thing now if you have worked in vim okay it's expected you know the process types process types are nothing but all the exceptions it can be triggered through and uh, uh, through a function module it can be triggered based on a table field value all these things the next thing is how can you automate the processing of process types so there can be cases where some of the suppose something is waiting for a gr okay and someone enters the gr how can you automate that so there is a rule. there's a wait step there's there's a scheduling thing that you can schedule for a particular uh, process type or every process type so that it runs and checks whether the gr has been done if the gr is, has been done it should not be sitting with the requisitioner it should go uh, go further and the next question is how to determine whether a role is calling a config or a custom function this is very important because based on this most of the workflow errors uh things that comes in a support or even while you're building the vim process is related with roles so you need to know whether the role is calling a custom function module or it's calling the standard config and from that people they might ask more questions like if you if i have a buyer do you expect and then they will say the real consulting questions where whether you want to ask a, a customer to maintain a buyers some places that's a very poor design because you know you can get the buyer name from the po number or something you can build some logic based on that don't give the burden to the uh, to the customer to maintain something this is the worst thing that they can do before in vim people used to do this but that's very well this is not good uh, so in in a simplified version it should be smart enough to figure it out who is the buyer okay the next one uh, the next question is basically i am telling that how can you test the roles these are very important so there might be case where the where a query comes where the user says this should have been assigned to this user but now it has been assigned to this user so you need to troubleshoot okay to be honest if something is assigned to some users that means the code has been written by it it can be a misconception or there can be a enhancement in code that needs to be done the next one can be how can you test logic modules so you have to tell how to test logic modules there's a there's a transaction code you don't need to know her by heart but you just say hey there's a transaction code you put the breakpoint in the logic module and from there you can test it so all these things there is a features that has been done is so that you can test it so you don't disrupt the actual dp item okay then the next one they will be asking is how can you hide simulate obsolete button based on roles these are configuration that is expected that you will be knowing if you don't know then you'll figure it out there will be a checkbox where you can assign you can just by the click of the checkbox this can be hidden okay now if they the next question they might be programmatically can you do it of course everything can be done programmatically but uh, so in those cases you can say if you don't know the bapper if you don't know to do the bap work 
you can say hey i can uh, give it to the above team and they will be doing it okay uh, then how can you hide process option dynamically this is a very important thing i'm just giving an example where i i assign assign the a partic particular process options for suppose call fv60 now calling every 60 i give to all the users but it should be smart enough to only show that button only for uh, users who only for users who have who don't have uh, who don't have the it should only show for users who have the authorization okay so you can put a function module uh, dynamically for the check then the next question they may kind of ask is how can I reassign approval DP and normal DP? This is very important question because approval DP can needs to be reassigned through a different function model, different uh, transaction code, or you can recall and send it. But for the actual DP, you can directly forward. Okay, but there might be questions where can I forward an approval DP? Because that's the next question they will ask. They want to know whether you have done that. If someone says i can directly forward the workflow item then that per you can forward it but it will not work so in those cases we check the how much skill level they have whether they have worked on it or not okay then then the next question is everyone wants uh, when gets a workflow item they want or a vim item they want a real-time notification in vim you have the real time there's no real time notification it's all about the reminders okay the vim dp workflow i'm not talking about approval workflow approval workflow you can do it through a certain uh, transaction code you maintain it and it will work but for the vim items the, you need to you you don't have anything so in those cases how will you do it yeah at the end of the day vim uses standard sophisticated workflows that so you can use the standard workflow notification to generate the emails okay real time then how can i determine the next question is very common how can i determine dp stuck with terminated user so these things you can easily find it through workflow administrations okay so these are stuffs that are very 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 important and you can think and again uh, these are some of the questions that generally a vim consultants would be asked and there can be hundreds and hundreds of questions again to be honest you need to just mention your resume put the resume all the things that you have already done okay and based on that they will ask questions and also lots of times generally uh, the person who is taking the interview will ask you question based on how you are talking how you're saying those things so as i said if you are saying i have done work on support they will be us asking support related and if someone something you don't know okay you will just say i don't know but i would like to know that okay so this is something that because at the end of the day no one knows everything okay so everyone is learning and it's expected uh, the the main thing about uh, taking well we check in a candidate is the attitude what they if they say i everything is possible that's the attitude we love because he can he's a go-getter so these are things that you have to um, take into consideration while taking an sap vim interview